So I've been reading a lot of African inspired fantasy lately and each time the protagonist meets a king or queen they usually perform the standard bow or they kneel but I've noticed that there is one particular action that was commonly practiced in the Mali and Songhai empires that was considered the proper way to show respect to a king or emperor but I've yet to see it depicted in a fantasy setting. So in this video, we're going to check out some historical sources that describe the practice and explore how exactly one went about showing proper deference to a West African emperor. Now, the famous pre-modern explorer Ibn Battuta visited the Empire of Mali in 1352. At the time, the empire was ruled by Mansa Suleiman, the successor of the successor of the infamous Mansa Musa. So whilst Battuta was there, he witnessed a number of royal audiences and described the customs he observed. When the Sultan makes a speech in his audience, those present take off their turbans from their heads and listen in silence. He also gives an account of a man who approaches Mansa Suleiman during one of these royal audiences, though here Ibn Battuta refers to Mansa Suleiman using the title Sultan. He stands as if he were prostrating himself in prayer, and here's what the Sultan says like this. If one of them speaks to the Sultan and he answers him, he takes his robe off his back and throws dust on his head and back, like someone making his ablutions with water. Moving along the timeline to the 1500s, in his book Descriptions of Africa, published in 1550, Leo Africanus notes that the King of Gao, who we know to be Askia al Haj Muhammad I, did not hold court or negotiate alone, but was accompanied by a body of retainers. Between the public and private gates of his palace, there is a large courtyard surrounded by a wall. On each side of this courtyard, a loggia serves as audience chamber. Although the king personally handles all his affairs, he is assisted by numerous functionaries, such as secretaries, counsellors, captains and stewards. Leo Africanus then goes on to describe how subjects of the empire approach the Askia, though he refers to Askia Muhammad using the title king. When anyone wants to address the king, he kneels before him, takes a handful of dust and sprinkles it over his head and shoulders. And it's this gesture of pouring dust on the head that I found cropping up again and again in the work of different scholars. And it appears that the gesture was slightly different based on a person's rank or social status. Hunwick notes in his translation of the Tariq al Sudan that when people addressed him, the Askia, they had to pour dust on their bare heads first except for the genikoi who could pour flour and the kamina fari who could leave his headgear on whilst pouring dust. It seems that covering your head with dirt was the proper way to show respect to an emperor, but conversely to refuse to do so could be interpreted as an act of defiance. In the Tariq al Sudan, written by the African scholar Al Sadi in around the mid 1600s, when Uthman Yobabo was in open rebellion against his older brother Askia Musa, Uthman was said to have declared the following, I swear that this head of mine shall never have dust poured on it for anyone. And Bala, another of Askia Musa's rebellious younger brothers, was said to have told Askia Musa's son, For me there is no escape from death, since there were three things that I will never do. I will not address your father as Askia. I will not pour dust on my head for him, and I will not ride behind him. And that concludes our look at the correct way to show deference to a medieval West African emperor. I think it's little cultural details like this that have the potential to make fantasy worlds feel richer. Our readers learn tidbits about African history whilst also enjoying the adventure and escapism offered by the genre. Now just as an aside, I do plan on finishing the last video in the architecture series at some point, but I've been experimenting with making some long form essay style videos and making fan content for African fantasy books I enjoy, but I'll be talking more about that over on Twitter. And that brings us to the end of the video. As always, you'll find all my sources in the description box below. Uh, if you liked the video or found it useful at all, please do drop us a like and consider subscribing to the channel. Well, that's it from me. Take care and good luck with your projects.